Greetings and salutations audience, Makes Game Mike here bringing you Ace in the Window. Today, live to tape from the Bicycle Hotel and Casino in Bell Gardens, California. Greetings and salutations audience, Makes Game Mike here with Ace in the Window. Today I'm joined by a co-host from the World Series of Poker, a friend from Dealing as well. Connie Dean. Hi. How are you doing? I'm good. How's Great it to going? see you. Yeah, you too. Yeah. Thanks for coming on the program today. Definitely. And helping out in the uh, co host chair today. Yeah, so, I'm happy to yeah, be it's here. It's great to see you. Yeah. <laughs> um, today we are shooting the show from the fabulous Bicycle Casino and Hotel in Los Angeles, California. Yeah. Or I should say, Lovely Bell Gardens, California. That's right, Bell Gardens. Yes, from Bell Gardens, California. Check it out. Absolutely. So since you were available for the show, I figured it would only make sense if I um, brought in a lot of your experience and looked into kind of the coaching and playing background to look to see if we could pull any bits out for the audience to have a takeaway for, you know, how um, you're thinking about certain poker situations and, you know, how you might coach someone to go through a situation or think through a situation. So um, I'm going to use an old show of Poker Sesh as a guide on this one for a lot of the questions, and that was... Um, the show where Abe Lima interviewed Mike Basic, which, uh, if you're interested, you can find highlights on the Poker Sesh Design YouTube channel that is our sister channel, I suppose. Um, links are available in the description, and you can see all the highlights from the Mike Basic interview. Um, it's a lot of good general information and a lot of just discussion about poker. So we're going to go over kind of some of the same questions that Abe asked Mike um, and just kind of, you know, see how the answers are. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so the next caller to the show wanted to go back to a poker house quiz and they ended up going through two scenarios. So we're going to go through the same two scenarios and just kind of see um, you know what your kind of response is for those. Um, the scenario is it's a 2 5 game. Uh, everyone is about 100 big blinds deep. The under the gun player raises to 35. Middle position calls, and you're in the small blind with ace queen off. What are you going to do? So, for me, I like to see a lot of hands. Um, I'm going to call in that position. Um, but the truth is that these types of questions are difficult because mm -hmm. everything in poker is relative. Yes. So uh, what do you know about these players? Have you been observing them for hours mm -hmm. or are you just sitting down fresh at the table? If you're sitting down fresh at the table, you know, I always take a dip in my chip stack right at the beginning because I'm paying off hands to learn how people play. And then I, you know, mm -hmm. make a comeback after I know how they play. But for the most part, you need to categorize this player. How do they play? Do they, do, have you seen them raise with ace, queen? What are their raising hand ranges? Mm -hmm. um, you don't want to get too deep into a hand where they could have aces, kings, queens, or ace, king against you. That's mm -hmm. a nightmare scenario. But... Uh, I think in this situation, most of the time, you're going to see a flop with this hand. I don't recommend re-raising ever in this scenario unless you're playing with two wild and crazy players. Um, and then, you know, if you hit your ace or your queen on the flop, I would check it makes you look weak, and um, your opponent might continuation bet, but they might not. And if they don't, then that gives you information. 
if they do, that gives you information. So right. uh, I don't bet in that situation to see where I'm at, to see if I get raised. I check and call, I'm usually there. So uh, there's a lot of factors that go into that, but pretty much never folding a queen preflop unless I put somebody on a big hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, similar situation, but in, in this case, the undergun player only open for 20. Three people in the middle called, and you're still in the small blind with king 10 off. Again, I'm just calling there. Um, I like to see a lot of hands though. Mm -hmm. So for me, you flop a straight or you flop two pair, you're in really good shape. If a king flops out there or a 10, I'm less likely to bet in mm -hmm. those situations. Um, but four way action with that hand, and it's only costing you 15 mm -hmm. to win basically 80. Um, it's not a bad scenario. I would see a flop with that hand. Do you ever consider that as a candidate for a squeeze play? Uh, I'm not with a, only one person behind I'm not a big fan of a squeeze play with, with cards that bad. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I think you're in the worst position. Mm -hmm. So you have to tread carefully here. I mean, everyone's going to see what you do and they're going to start putting you on a hand. You want to play in such a way that uh, they don't know what you have. So you want to do the opposite of what they would expect you to do. Mm -hmm. So, uh, but there's not really a flop I mean, you can almost check in the dark mm -hmm. because there's not many flops here that you're going to bet out on. Maybe an open end flop you might bet. Mm -hmm. um, again, because you don't have anything and you're trying to demonstrate strength when you're pretty weak. Um, but I'm mostly letting the continuation better see what they're going to do in that situation. Again, it comes down to what type of player they are. Do they raise 50% of the hands mm -hmm. uh, that they enter the pot with or 10% of the hands, you know? Mm -hmm. okay. Those kind of things make a difference. All right. So you really, the entire time you're playing, put your phone down, turn it off, watch the players, Mm -hmm. uh, see their betting patterns. That's going to make you more money than whatever you're doing on your phone, most likely. So uh, pay attention. Yeah, I, I don't see poker players paying attention these days. They play their own hands, and they don't care, really. And it's, it's one of those things that's making them $30 an hour instead of over $100 yeah. an hour. So Just not paying attention. Yeah. Makes sense. Well, that's it for this show, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you liked it. If you did, hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and tell us what you thought down below in the comments. Bye now.